Thanks a lot for the uh, introduction. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so my name is Kyle van den Hende, and I'm from the uh, University of Ghent. And I'm here to talk about uh, partial factors and the adjusted partial factor uh, methods that's also included in the model code 2020. Now, when I talk about partial factors, I think everyone in this room knows the values 1.5, 1.35, and 1.15. These are the values that we use to design a new uh, concrete or reinforced concrete structures. And these values are, yes, are um, based on a certain uh, level of safety. And this level of safety is mostly expressed uh, as a target reliability index. And this reliability index uh, is directly um, connected to a certain probability of failure. And this is what we indicate here as a certain beta value. And how do we then determine this uh, target safety level for a new structure? Well, mostly what we do is we do a certain cost optimization. And what do we include in these costs? We include the uh, construction cost and also the expected cost in case of failure. And that we do for a whole range of different values of this uh, beta. And then we have this top line here, which is the total expected cost, which corresponds to a certain minimum, which is 3.8 in case uh, for the design of new structures. And this value then on its turn corresponds to the classical partial factors of 1.5, 1.35 and 1.15. So this is for new structures, but in case we go to the assessment of an existing structure, something changes because uh, generally the cost for a um, structural intervention or a structural strengthening is higher than for the case of new structures. So what happens to this line? This line shifts to the left and the minimum um, will be more to the left. So your optimal safety level will change as well. And this beta value will be lower than this classical 3.8. I also note that there is a minimum for the human safety, but in most cases, this is uh, not critical. So we have this new um, Oh, it's this way. We have this new um, beta value and we want to translate it to certain partial factors. And these do not correspond to the classical ones for new structures. So how do we go from this new uh, target value for beta to partial factors? Well, the answer for that um, was in the FIB bulletin 80, where they were, so uh, they were searching for a new, sorry, it's this way for a new partial factor method for the assessment of non-degrading structures. And in this work, um, you had a, a new formula where you could derive new partial factors for a certain value of this target beta value. So you could choose your safety level and based on that, derive new partial factors. But there's also a second thing that's important here. You could also include information from measurements that you could execute. For example, you could do uh, measurements on site, which give you more information about the uncertainty of, for example, the concrete compressive strength. You could also include that in the formulation and then also create a new partial factor for your concrete, which is then uh, less conservative. And these partial factors you derive with this method, you can then directly apply in the Eurocode and all the other guidelines to then do the assessment of your existing structure and see of the, of the resistance is still enough, or if you have to do some uh, structural, structural intervention, for example. So that was what was done in uh, FEB Bulletin 80. But now in the Moleco 2020, um, it's improved even more because, because what's included now, there is, I'll read it with you, a harmonized proposal of partial factors for the design and the assessment of structures. And then the last part is the most important part uh, for today. That's both for degrading, for degrading as non-degrading structures. Because something changes when we go from a non-degrading to a degrading structure. And to explain that, I'll first explain what this um, beta actually means for a non-degrading structure. So say, for example, that we want to design a concrete beam, which has a lifetime of 50 years. And during these 50 years, 
we say, okay, we take the, um, the most critical variable load that can be applied or that can occur during these 50 years. So in other words, we take a variable load with a reference period of 50 years. Then we combine this load to a certain resistance, which we now assume remains constant in time, or in other words, we have a non-degrading structure. And we compare this um, critical load to this resistance, and this gives us a certain failure probability, or probability that our structure fails at the instant of this critical variable load. Now, as the resistance is constant in time, it doesn't matter if this, um, this critical load occurs at the beginning of the structure's lifetime or at the end of it. But this changes when our structure is degrading, because now the resistance actually decreases over time. This is this, this curve over time, which goes down. So now it's actually, it matters when this critical uh, load during our with a 50 year reference period, when it's actually gonna be present. We could say, okay, we're gonna um, design in a safe way, and we take the critical load with a reference period of 50 years, and we compare that with the resistance at the end of the lifetime. But what we actually do in this case is we already assume that this critical load, which can occur somewhere in this 50 year period, is gonna occur at the final instant of our structure's lifetime, which will probably not happen. So we are going to design way too conservative here. So we need a new approach, and this approach is what changes for degrading versus non-degrading structures. And what do we do? Well, instead of calculating the failure probability for one time, for one instance, we're gonna evaluate it year after year. So every year, we're gonna calculate the probability that our structure fails, and we're gonna do that for all the years during the structure's lifetime. And in this one specific year, we then take the uh, variable load, which has then a reference period of one year instead of a reference period of 50 years. So this is the main difference between a degrading and a non-degrading structure. But now what changes as well is this uh, beta value, because this beta value that I talked, to, uh, talked about in the beginning actually depends on the reference period as well. And the beta target values we had they were based on a reference period of 50 years, but now we go back to reference period of one year. And actually in the Eurocode uh, today, there are also target values when using a reference period of one year. These are in this table here. But what they currently say is that the um, probability that our structure fails in, for example, year 15 and in year 16 are completely independent events. So we have a set of independent events where all these uh, probabilities of failure are independent of each other. But actually this is not the reality because the resistance we more, we will be more or less similar. And to cope with that issue, actually new um, target reliability indices or target beta values for reference period of one year have been developed. And these are, for example, included in the GCSS probabilistic model code. So, okay, we have now the beta target values with a reference period of one year. Then I also, for the sake of completeness, have to uh, say that the sensitivity factors also change when going to a reference period of 50 years to a reference period of one year. I won't go uh, too much into detail about that today. Um, but now we have everything, or you know everything, uh, to then determine new partial factors. And this is the equation for the new partial factor for a permanent load. And I'll explain for this one all the terms that are present in here. First, you have this beta value here. This is your target reliability index. And this changes whether you're working with a one year reference period or a 50 year reference period. So in other words, if you're uh, designing a structure or assessing a structure and if it's deteriorating or not. Then we have this alpha factor, that's the sensitivity factor that also depends on the reference period. And we have a um, variation coefficient for our model uncertainty. This one uh, depends on which failure mode you're con uh, considering, and then also a variation coefficient of the permanent load itself, 
And this depends on whether the permanent load is caused by the self-weight of a certain element or if it's caused by another type of load. So that's how you can derive a new partial factor for the permanent loads. Um, the, same thing, or, uh, the same thing for the variable loads. Uh, I won't go into detail, but the most important thing here is that there are two different equations. Um, if you want to derive the partial factor for a wind load, a snow load, or an imposed load, the load is mainly Gumbel distributed. So therefore, you have, um, you have to use the left equation here. Uh, or if you are considering a traffic load, uh, this load is mainly log normally distributed. So therefore, you have another equation. Then you also have a partial factor for the material characteristics. And um, finally, here, all the equations are combined in a table. So there's a whole uh, chapter in the model code about this new partial factor method. But in um, the paper Professor Kasper and I written, we tried to make a summary. And therefore, we created this table so it's easier to find all the information in the same uh, place and closer to each other. So that's just for your information. Um, also, in the um, model code are certain reference values for all the parameters uh, included as well. So for example, here are reference values for all the uh, material ca characteristics. Of course, if you do measurements on site and you know more about the uncertainty about a certain parameter, uh, you can also include that and use these values instead of these uh, reference values. So we have reference values for the materials, also reference values for the uh, loads, which can be either the, for the time variant component or the time invariant component. And then finally, when using all these reference values, um, you can then determine the partial factors as well. So here you have one table with all the uh, partial factors you can use in case you have absence of additional information. Here on top, you have the classical partial factors for uh, the design case when you want to follow the Euro code. Um, this is for certain types of consequence classes, which are also already defined in the current guidelines. But then if you want to use the uh, model codes um, formulas for the design, you can use these as well. And also for the assessment, when you have to work with a reference period of one year, you also have the new partial factors. And now up to the last parts of uh, my presentation of today, and that's the validation of these equations to derive new partial factors. And I don't have that much time anymore, so I will go rather quick. Um, what you do actually to validate these uh, partial factors is you search for a certain target reliability index beta. And with this target value, you determine partial factors and you perform your design. In an ideal world, your design actually corresponds to a certain safety level that's the same one as you targeted. But that won't be the case because you use partial factors and that's a simplified method to include all the uncertainties. So what you want is that the uh, target value, that's the horizontal dotted line you use to determine the partial factors, corresponds to the actual uh, beta value or the actual safety level you have for a certain design. And this is done for a couple of designs when designing a reinforced concrete beam subjected to bending. And uh, this is done for the Euro code, uh, for the design when using the Euro code or design using the model code 2020. And the most important things here is that you can see that when using the uh, model code 2020 equations, the uh, targeted values are way closer to the actual values. And also in every case, the uh, actual target uh, or the actual safety level is above your targeted safety level. So we're always in a safe uh, situation. Then this is also done for all the other um, equations as well. So for example, when doing assessment and that you can find in the paper. So finally, some conclusions um, and I'll go rather quickly. So I said when you are assessing a existing structure, you can use this new beta target value because you have an increase in costs. Uh, when you go to an exist or a deteriorating structure, we can't use the reference period of 50 years, but you have to go to one year. Um, and we can do all of this uh, using these, this new partial factor method, which is validated for reinforced structures subjected to bending. So thank you a lot for your attention. If you have 
for the questions you can always ask me or contact uh, Professor Kaspele directly. Because we are running out of yeah. time, we will take only one question now. And uh, just to have a teaser, uh, and while Harry is walking with the microphone, I will uh, uh, just uh, uh, re uh, repeat that this is an example how we dealt with new and existing structures with the consistent way. So while having a differentiation in uh, values, the approach is uh, uh, consistent, and that's uh, one of the uh, sub uh, significant improvements that we were able to make comparing to Model Code 2010. Um, yes. Can we have your question? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah, it's a good approach. Actually, I have been looking forward for this kind of approach uh, in partial safety factors. Uh, we also have to account for method of construction in these partial safety factors because geometry depends on the method of construction, like precast or rigid monolithic construction and all. And uh, there was a research uh, done uh, using fuzzy logic proposing more rational uh, partial safety factors, modeling the uncertainty in uh, geometry, materials, and loading. I hope that will also be incorporated into this uh, model code. Carol? Yes, uh, thank you for your question. I don't know if that specific research is included uh, in the model code as well, but for example, if you can uh, quantify your uncertainties uh, yourself, you can always include them uh, in these equations. Um, but you have different standard situations. For example, when you have done additional testing, there is also an option to then use lower partial factors. I think it, it looks like a good beginning for the discussion for the coffee break. I, I believe there will be more people interested to join. Thank you very much. And, uh... <laughs>